All right, glad uh, you're back with us as we continue our series, uh, Faith at Work. Uh, we've been doing these uh, on video Sunday nights now, uh, primarily, but it's been interesting. I know I've gotten a no number of positive comments, uh, just hearing about uh, people saying they didn't know, you know, what the jobs people had, different jobs and things like that. So uh, that's been enjoyable to hear. And also, um, I've heard from other people that work uh, middle age, I'll say, uh, they've enjoyed hearing the responses from folks, you know, in, in relation to dealing with temptation and some of those type of things that have been helpful. So I heard a lot of positive comments. So I'm thankful uh, for those comments and, and thankful for those that have participated um, in this so far. And I've got a number of other interviews lined up uh, to continue to participate. But today, um, as we meet together, we've got Sheree Bolser here, and uh, she's gonna share about her uh, job and what she's uh, done and, and doing. Uh, some of you may know, some of you may know a little bit, uh, but as we go through, she's going to share uh, share what she does. So what, um, Sheree, just kind of starting out, just share a little bit about maybe your education, uh, kind of where you got started uh, with your job and kind of how you got to the point you're at today. Um, well, I was an athlete all through school and uh, I wanted to be just like my coach, even though he told me, don't do it. Um, <laughs> I, I knew better, you know, I was 18, so I was really smart back then. Um, so anyway, I went to college and got a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology and- um, Where did you go to school at? Lamar. Oh, oh Lamar. At okay. Lamar, yeah. I ran track for one year there and then um, I quit after that year and finished out my degree and got my Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology and um, went to work being a coach. Oh, okay. Where do where's some of the places you've gone? Where did you start at? What was your kind I've of your first everywhere. job? I've worked everywhere. I know um, your first job. You kind of go. This whoever says uh, I, hello and come on. You, yes. you kind of go. I worked in Warren my first year. I taught okay. eighth grade social studies, and I coached um, all three middle school sports: volleyball, basketball, and track. I was the head cross country coach for girls and boys. The head girls high school track coach. Um, in little schools, you do. I was going to say that was, all, that was all at Warren? Yes, that was all at Warren. And I was <laughs> only there one year. And uh, then I went to Newton and I actually didn't coach at Newton. I just taught second grade. Oh, okay. And uh, that was when I was pregnant. And uh, it was pretty great. And then I got on at Lumberton. It was closer to home. So um, I worked three years in Lumberton teaching um, fourth, fifth, sixth. And I covered social studies math and science throughout <laughs> those. Yeah, I moved stuff. around a little bit. And then um, I got on at Nederland, 14, I just finished my 14th year, and I've been PE and I've coached just about everything. Um, volleyball, track, basketball, soccer, tennis, swimming. Oh, um, it is and, almost every sport. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think it's easier to list the ones I didn't coach. Um, and now I'm at Central at the middle school level, uh, just coaching volleyball and track, and it's great. And PE on, yeah, a, regular, teach PE. on a regular yeah. school day. Yeah. Yeah, with, uh, how many PE classes do you usually have, like three or four? Or something? Um, yeah, we have two separate seventh and eighth grade classes, and then a fifth grade class and a sixth grade class. And then I have seventh grade athletics in the morning mm. and eighth grade in the afternoon. Oh, okay. So how many years have you been at Nederland? I think you said like, 14, fourteen years 14, at Nederland, okay. nineteen total. I'm about to start my twentieth year of coaching. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. The, as those landmarks come, I know. Uh, um, I think I have twenty-two years in ministry. So yeah, you you, you think two, three, five years, you're like, yeah. and then you start adding up, and yeah. you're like, I'm kind of getting a little bit old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to admit as, it. <laughs> as time goes forward, so okay. So you're at the middle school now. You said, uh, and at Nederland we have two middle schools. Most of you probably know, but how many kids do you uh, kind of work with in athletics? Rough. I know it changes uh, from year to year, but uh, in seventh or, grade, you're, you're doing basketball and what do you think? Just doing volleyball now? and track. Volleyball and track. Mm -hmm. Okay, I knew it was two. Um, well, in our athletics class, there in seventh grade, we have close to 50, and eighth grade, we have close to 40. That's females, or is that? Yes, that's that, just female. So I'm right, just on the girls' okay. side. Yeah. And um, so, like, on the volleyball team in seventh grade, A and B combined, I would say probably about 20. And then for track, if anybody I can convince to run. No, it's smaller, I think. Oh, smaller? Okay. They I hate it. They hate it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, my middle school, I played middle school basketball, but uh, Coach Griffith, he, uh, and a, he's a, was one of the track coaches. Mm -hmm. He's like, Williams, you need to come out and run track. And I'm like, Coach, running is the last thing in the world I want to do. I know. You <laughs> have to beg, borrow, and steal I had to, to run, get a track team. I had to run in basketball enough that I was yeah. like, I don't, I don't yeah. want to run around in circles. So uh, how many people do you work with kind of in your environment there? I know you have another female coach that helps yeah. with the girls. I think Directly, I have my one, Coach Tanner. Yeah, they and kind then, of tag team partner. Right, we're right together here. all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's another coach, Coach Bell. But I mean, you know, all the teachers at the school, we interact and, and everything. Yeah. Uh, and I was trying to think how many there were. I don't even know. Um, maybe like 50? I, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, you lightly interact with them more. Right, right. Uh, right. And I mean, I'm, I'm you know, it. pretty good friends with, with a lot of them. The ones yeah, that I see more often, you know, obviously, I'm closer to. What is a regular, <clears throat> kind of regular day? I know you mentioned a mix of PE and some of your um, uh, athletic events. We, okay, teams. so, you know, in the fall or in the spring, you know, during, during season, um, I'll go in, we get there. I guess about 6.45 and um, start with volleyball and we do volleyball through the end of first period, which is uh, like 8.56 yeah, or something. Nine. I don't, yeah, it's not, almost nine o'clock. Yeah. And uh, our, it's hours. such a weird minutes. Like they're not like on the fives. Yeah, it yeah, drives yeah. me crazy. 42 and 80. Yes, and yeah, yes. 37. It's, yeah. yeah, and I forget every summer. So <laughs> um, I haven't been to school in four months. Yeah. So. <laughs> everything's, yeah, everything's <laughs> and I have no idea what's going on. Um, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, we do volleyball, then we go straight into second period, which is 7th and 8th grade PE, which those, the 7th and 8th grade PE classes, are they're just hard to motivate the kids to do anything at all. <laughs> and um, after that, then we have third period, which is 6th grade PE. That one's always fun because the 6th graders are like eager. Kind of, kind of they're, excited. Yeah, they're ready, you know, <laughs> ready to kind of rock and roll and do whatever we ask them to. Then we go back to seventh and eighth grade PE again, and then we get lunch, and then after lunch is fifth grade PE, so that's kind of fun. The new guys, yeah, and uh, kind of yeah, because they're to be at the school. yeah, they're scared, <laughs> and you know, they, I mean, they love PE. Little kids love PE because it's we don't, you know, we just ask them to have fun yeah. and um, set up a game and have right, fun, yeah, right, yeah, and uh, you know, they're eager, so it's it's easy to teach them and motivate them to move. Mm. The seventh and eighth graders don't want to move. <laughs> if they did, they'd be in athletics, you know, or band. Or, or want to be in athletics. Yeah, yeah, yeah they would be in, a, in another place. Um, so all your kids that are more easily motivated or I feel like I'm bad-mouthing seventh and eighth grade nah. kids. It's not that. It's just they don't want to do push-ups and crunches. They'd rather be on their phone, yeah. Right, so, you know. So, so then after fifth grade PE, we have our conference period or planning period, mm -hmm. which comes in handy on game days. We go get the bus or pick up mm -hmm. food or whatever we need get to ready, do. Get ready, yeah. And then we go into eighth grade <clears throat> athletics and stay there till four, four thirty, you oh, know, uh, something like that. That's a good ten or eleven hour day in season. Mm -hmm. Whenever you are practicing for yep. whatever's in season. <clears throat> what would you say kind of a high and low? What do you enjoy most about your job? Kind of generally speaking, what do you enjoy least about your job? What would you say? Um I definitely enjoy the athletics classes the most. Mm. Um, I think, Coaching the sport. Kind yes. Of thing, um, I like volleyball season the best, uh, which I never thought I would say because I was a runner <laughs> all through high school. But, you know, you have those one or two kids who want to run, and that's fun during track season. But then the rest of them where you're Dragging along, sorry. trying to get them to, that's not quite as fun, you know. <laughs> um, but I love volleyball. I love mm -hmm. volleyball season because they, they love it. They want to put in the work. Um, me and my coworker work together so well. I mean, we're almost like inside each other's heads. And I mean, we've only been together like five years. So I think that's pretty impressive. That's good. You about, know, that we're so. That's a good amount of time too for middle school. Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, it's just, it's, it's fun and. I won't say easy. It's easy because we enjoy it. Mm. If that, I mean, so the the hard work that we put in is worth it. So. The one thing I, I think I may mention in another video, but if I was in ministry, one thing I would want to do would be a middle school athletics coach because I substituted some. Uh, the first job I had was in Sweeney, Texas, a yep. uh, small town. But one day a week I would substitute at the middle school or high school. Mm -hmm. And I love substituting at the middle school. I don't know about your perspective of middle school and high school students <laughs> and how much you enjoy or don't enjoy. Because they're- They're some, totally different. Yeah, I know, but like, so the, like you're saying, I'll go some, at least the fifth, sixth, seventh grade, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, 
they're, you know, they're fun. And as a sub, I would be like, hey, let's get our work done. And then we can just kind of hang out. And then, oh, you're cool, Mr. Williams, you know? Yeah. And so, so it was fun, you know, cause I would, you know, treat them with respect and say, get your work done and we'll mm -hmm. chill. And if you don't get your work done, we'll work the whole period, you know? Yeah. But, but, it, but you know, middle school is still at the age where you can kind of be like, they look at you as cool in high school, I would sub and they'd be like, yeah. what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm your substitute teacher. I'm supposed to be here, you know? It's like, get out of here. And I'm yeah. like, no, I'm sorry, but I'm here for, for an hour and whatever. It was block scheduling. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoy middle school. Uh, kids of uh, that age is fun uh, to, uh, <laughs> to interact with. And, and like you said, though, too, at the same time, you got some particularly in athletics that are like athletics, mass athletics, you know, I'm not, mm -hmm. I have zero interest or whatever. What about uh, kind of enjoy least, what would you say? Anything come to mind? Um, <clears throat> <laughs> what are you thinking of something? You know, I'm trying to like, like make sure it's worded. Oh, appropriate, correctly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I guess least, um, it, you know, trying to motivate the ones who, and this is more in PE classes, who just don't Have zero design, want right. to do it. Just trying to get them to do 10 crunches or 10 push-ups. Or know? run from one end of the court to the other. Right. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just to get them to do a little bit. That's difficult mm -hmm. at times. Yeah. And yeah. So, you know. And trying to find them. It can be disheartening moment. at times, I guess, is what makes it not fun, you know, because yeah. everything, I mean, all of it's a challenge and I'm not afraid of a challenge, mm -hmm. but if, when you feel like you can't get through to somebody, that's frustrating. It's then. frustrating. Yeah. It's disheartening. You just kind of think, you know, what am I doing wrong? And Especially when it's a small thing, like, like you said, run to the right. court and back. Like I'm just asking you to dress out. <laughs> show, Even show, that. Show just up, show yeah. up on time <laughs> and put on your PE clothes. Like that's all I'm asking. First step. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Baby steps. But, yeah. So that can be, cool. that can be hard. Kind of looking, kind of lays the groundwork for, for what you do kind of day to day. Um, let's look at, kind of shift a little bit and look at your faith and how uh, your work affects your faith, how your faith affects your work. Kind of first question, uh, are there other Christians at your workplace and how is that uh, helpful kind of in the day to day uh, rigors of, of school environment teaching? Yes, there definitely are. Um, Courtney and I talk about God every day. <laughs> I mean, all the time because there's just so much that you know we do the best we can and we have a lot of um, ideas and things that we've learned and things that we've recently learned and read or saw or heard on how to get a certain outcome from from your students or from your team and sometimes you can do everything you can and it's just not working and um, you know a lot of times we just have to sit back and say okay you know we're gonna pray keep doing what we know how to do and hope God will it, handle it, you know? Safe. And <laughs> so we do, she and I, a hundred percent, I mean, have to lean on our faith a lot. And it is nice having a like-minded person to where, you know, it's, it's easy. We can, we can talk about our faith and our religions. We're different religion, religions, but you know, um, I mean, we're Christians and, and, that's nice. It is nice. Have you had environments in the past where it's been kind of a, a little bit more of a butting heads or difficulty? And I really haven't. It's been at least had to deal kind with of neutral or, or average to right. Know, um, in this case, above average, so to yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, I know at one time at our school we did have a teacher who was a like professed atheist. Mm -hmm. um, she's no longer there, but it was never uh, an issue for me. I know. Mm -hmm. I think. And the only reason I think this is because one of our young men here mm. actually did a Wednesday night talk about yeah. that particular teacher Made reference um, there, several but... years ago when he was there. But um, so I do think she kind of pushed it in her classroom, but not around me. It never affected me on a personal Your level, except too, for the yeah. fact that I made sure my kid didn't have her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, as a coworker, it wasn't an issue. And yeah. that's really the only... Um, I mean, I, I guess in my field, I'm pretty lucky, you know. Um. I was going to say, too, I know coaches get, and, which I was around, fortunately, around good coaches, quote, unquote, mm -hmm. who uh, we had one. I think, it, well, I played one year of football in 12th grade, but we had a defensive coordinator. He always tell a corny joke that was slightly off color. It wasn't mm -hmm. like all the way off color. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of the joke of the joke that he would tell a, a slightly off color joke. Right. But I never had coaches that were like, 
cursing in your face yeah. and angry. And I know not that coaches get that reputation. I'm not saying that, but I didn't know if you'd kind of uh, rubbed elbows in some of those situations, and it makes I mean, it, and it makes it yeah. difficult on the kids. You know, where you're trying to encourage a kid, and another coach is like, blah blah blah. You know, just uh, yeah, breaking, mean, kind of breaking down instead of. I mean, I have worked with another coach who who was a little more over, over intense with or, than yeah. I was, but. Even with that, we we kind of balanced each other out, like a mm. bad cop, good cop yeah, kind of yeah. thing, you know. And he he was a good coach. Mm. I, you know, he may not have – should have said some things that he said, but I can't deny his record. Um, mm. And the kids loved him and respected him. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I mean, I guess it kind of takes all kinds, but, you know, we, we all have different approaches to coaching. Mm. I mean, at Central, I'm the main one. Oh, really? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Coach Leonard is the I'm nice the, one, the and girls, I'm, I'm the main the one, girls, you know. Uh, <laughs> and it's just, I mean, it just is what it is. That's just yeah. <laughs> that's funny. how we And are both nice people. I mean, I met her, but, mm -hmm. I, I met her a little bit. I'm not, yeah. I spent a lot of yeah. time with her, but she's a nice Yeah, she's, she's a great. Nice lady. Um, Obviously, she's known as a nice one among all the kids. Exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. And, and, you're a nice, like, and you're a nice lady, Well, we, we laugh and we joke and we say, like, she's the mom and I'm the dad, you know, because she's like... <laughs> The, oh, you cut yourself, come here, let me get you a band aid. And I'm like, give suck up. it up. Give you a hug. Come on, go wipe it off and let's go. You know? get, a, get a drink of water and start <laughs> yeah. running again. Yeah. What are uh, some temptations, perhaps, in the environment that you work in uh, that you may encounter? Um, well, this was the one we actually we, we talked about it before, but I, it was hard for me to really think of anything. Um, and then you mentioned like uh, wanting to pass the athletes and mm -hmm. everything. and. I, as a coach, have never, I mean, that's just not even on the table for me. If the kid didn't do the work, then they don't, they, he deserve, doesn't deserve, deserve to play. Pass. Yeah. I mean, that, deserve to play. Yeah, right. Result, like it's, yeah. it's on the kid. I'll stay on the, the kid and, and try to get the kid to do the work, to go in for tutoring, to get the extra help, to, mm -hmm. you know, pass the, but class, the, pass the class. But yeah, at the yeah. end of it, at the end of the day, it's on the kid. I'm not going to ask a teacher to bump up a grade just so they can play football right. or whatever. Yeah. Um, my first, year I was at Warren and I was teaching eighth grade history so I had you know I was the only eighth grade history academic, teacher yeah, an academic class, mm -hmm. yeah. and I had of course the whole football team you know had me at some point during the day and um, a lot of the boys failed the first six weeks and mm. the athletic director jumped all over me and said you're a coach you don't fail athletes and I said well look here's their grades you know they've got 17 zeros they didn't turn in their work what do you want me to do with that and well you can't fail them. You got to let their let their coaches know and let them handle it. So after that, I didn't fail any more kids, and I did let the coaches know, and there were licks involved. But again, mm. that was twenty years ago, so mm. things were different. Mm. Um, so I mean, I guess you know, there's always that <clears throat> you want everybody to pass. I mean, but our two most talented basketball players this past year mm. didn't pass. They didn't play basketball. Mm. I mean, because they didn't make the grades. Right, it stinks, but yeah. we can't we can't do the work for them. Stinks for y'all and for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the yeah. same time. Yeah. yeah, I hated it for them, you know, and and for us. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's up to them at the end of the day. You know, we can do all we can, and that's yeah. all we can do. So. Yeah. How do you? Uh, I don't want well, another one you mentioned in middle school. Uh, it's it's a double edged sword a little bit. I mentioned having fun hanging out with middle schoolers and mm -hmm. substitute teacher but you're around them every day but mm -hmm. I think you mentioned too uh kind of the temptation to flop the handle with maybe oh, yeah. choice some yeah. choice individual ones uh a hundred percent yes knuckle my, knuckleheads that, keeping my anger in check is tested daily <laughs> and sometimes I pass point. that test and sometimes I don't <laughs> I'm not gonna lie you're known <laughs> as the bad coach or, I'm the, the mean, mean one mean coach, I'm the, the, mean coach. the mean coach yeah sort of but how do you avoid those temptations, maybe more, in a more general sense of uh, maybe dealing with the, you know, this one knucklehead that you just want to, uh, you know? Well, a lot of times, and Courtney and I use each other. I mean, I, like I've said, I'm super lucky to have her mm -hmm. with me. Um, we, we've used each other before where there are times when I just look at her and I'm like, Deal with that kid. Yeah. I'm walking away <laughs> because I want to keep my job. Yeah. You know, and she's done the and same deal thing. Deal with that kid for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and so we can kind of, take a little bit of the pressure off of each other mm -hmm. um, because sometimes she has a better rapport with a certain kid or mm -hmm. maybe I have a better rapport with a certain kid mm -hmm. believe it or not that's how individually yeah. um <laughs> you know and it just uh they know which buttons to push and when they're mm -hmm. pushing mine and I can look at her and say 
handle this for me. You got to take it. You got to take it from here. That's you know awesome. that helps a lot That's because good. I still have a job. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, what uh, kind of a last question here? Uh, and I mentioned to you before, and I mentioned on some of the other videos too, with especially with young people watching and middle-aged people watching, perhaps you learn lessons from these type of responses, but uh, how does doing your best at your job make you feel? What are some of the short-term benefits and gains, long-term benefits and gains, um, knowing that, hey, I, you know, maybe I didn't reach that kid, but I did 110% to try to help them achieve as a student, as an athlete, as a person. Uh, what are some of the short-term and long-term kind of uh, things that you gleaned from that sort of? I guess short term, um, you know, it's easy to uh, to see when you're doing a really good job. Um, it's easy to see when the kids get better at a sport or, um, you know, run a faster time or just do 10 push-ups with correct form. I mean, it can be, can you know, before, simple. Yeah. yeah, any kind of improvement in you know, in the in the physical sense, objective, it's, yeah, kind of objective it's super scene, easy yeah. to see, mm -hmm. you know, they used to couldn't pass a ball with any kind of control and now they can, or they couldn't get their serve over the net and now they can. Mm -hmm. Those are super exciting feelings. And then long term, um, it's just crazy. Sometimes really weird things happen there. Riley actually just told me, I'm not, I'm not bragging, but this is just super exciting for me. Mm -hmm. um, one of her friends was taking I think a speech class this summer and they had to write a, a speech about somebody who inspired them. Mm. And I don't know who the kid was, mm. but one of the kids wrote a speech about me mm. and I found out and I was like, that's cool. Oh my gosh. Was it nice? Was there, was there, a, was there a camera there? And I, can watch it? Yeah. I, know, I was like, how did that happen? Uh -huh. I mean, just little things like that, you know, or you'll get a, um, a note from, from a former student, um, you know, or like after they graduate, they'll Facebook friend you and, and message you, hey, you know, I really miss you. I enjoyed mm -hmm. having you be my coach or, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's, it feels mm -hmm. good. I mean, I still have kids, I call them kids, they're in their 30s, which, mm -hmm. whew, that makes me feel old. <laughs> um, who early, yeah, early, I had, early students, yeah. Right, <laughs> who I had in Warren in eighth grade who are in their 30s now. Mm -hmm. This one girl is doing Ironman triathlons and stuff. Oh, wow. And, um, like then this other guy, uh, a a boy. I guess he's a, I guess he's a man now. Young That's man, weird. Young man. Um, <laughs> every nine eleven, he he messages me because that was my first year. I was in Warren that year oh, when that okay, happened. Okay. And wow, he's always okay. like, I remember I was sitting in your classroom, and I remember you didn't even know, like nobody knew well, what was going on maybe. really. And um, you know, just staying in touch, mm. it's it's a good feeling. You know, it's like hey. I kind of made a difference in these kids' lives. Like I had this kid one year, twenty years ago, mm, and, they, and, and they remember you. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that's that's a that's a a good long term. Yeah, I think of doing doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I, and like I said, I played one year of football, but I remember three or four of my coaches that were, and a couple of them are still around that area doing different things a little bit, but. Uh, you know, things about them. I'm not in contact with them necessarily. I know I had opportunity, uh, a baseball coach that I had. I mean, it was uh, like local baseball league. Yeah. It wasn't like school baseball, but um, I went to, I think it was my 10 year reunion, and I was friends with his son who played baseball growing up. But um, I found out when I was there that his dad had cancer. And I was just like, wait, what? You know, and, and we were only there for like two, three days, but I had the opportunity to go by, and he was dying I mean essentially you know but I had the opportunity to go by mm -hmm. and you know he remembered me but his mind was not sharp you know right but just to say you know thanks for investing time in us mm -hmm. you know growing up and it was really cool to be able to yeah. do that you know but kind of like you're saying uh sport and I like sports a lot too mm -hmm. and uh so it's, it is important to have uh good coaches even though mm -hmm. you know like you said you coach them in uh you know whatever softball or tennis or and those things 20 years later don't mean mm -hmm. a whole lot, but they're like, you know, there's life lessons there. Of, yeah. Like you said, of sticking with your server until you get over the net 90% mm -hmm. of the time, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And, and uh, achievement that whenever they go to, to, to work in life, they're able to go, hey, I've done these things in the past and gotten over them and I can do this mm -hmm. now, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is, learn this new computer program or, or whatever it is yeah. and kind of get through it, even because I've done these things in the past. And, and got through them as well. Any other comments, kind of as we close out of uh, of things? I know we've talked about a number of things. So. Um, 
Nothing I can think of. Okay. Well, uh, interesting. Uh, enjoyed hearing about the, the middle school coach environment. Like I said, that's one thing I may have been doing in life if I didn't yep. run the ministry. Uh, fun, uh, fun things. So if you have any questions, uh, especially <clears throat> young people watching that want to be a coach, you know, um, first coach, I think that we've interviewed. So uh, feel free to ask Sheree about some of those things and, and uh, her experiences. Uh, hopefully it won't scare you away from coaching. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But uh, but important important position middle school the teachers but middle school teachers particularly formative time in life uh, important uh, position and thanks for being a, a good one in our community um, here in Nederland so let's uh, close with a prayer Father thank for the time that we've had to, to visit with uh, Sheree and, and share her story her uh, job and her work and and uh, thank for the years that she's invested in young people as she said. Uh, years later a uh, number of them contacting and continuing to say hey i remember you and and the investment that you made in me whether it was 20 years ago or five years ago or uh, and thankful for others like her um, who invest in young people and try to be a good example and, and to teach uh, good ethics and and uh, help them to be in a good wholesome environment uh, and, and uh, just pray that that those attitudes would continue uh, in her and also in others uh, that, that invest in children uh, just thankful for uh, her work ethic and her example and uh, to students and uh, and just pray that you'll be with uh, with her and, and with uh, other teachers sometimes in challenging work environments that are uh, sometimes with constraints put on them that are challenging uh, but still trying to do their job and and trying to do the best uh, to encourage young people and, and uh, to teach the content and the subject that they're uh, to teach and, and do it in a, a wholesome Christian way thankful for her example and I uh, pray that you continue to bless her in her efforts and others uh, who, who are working uh, with students. Thankful for the blessings that you give us day by day and to help us to seek to be a blessing to others as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.